Okay, I'm going to begin this presentation by showing you this map created in 1985. It appears in an essay or report titled Facts and Artifacts, The Story of Browning Hill. And it was written by Lee Irvin in 1987. And it was a, uh, for a publication of the American Indian Studies Research Institute. And this is in Brown County, Indiana. And figure one, and from the, this is the north entrance here, south entrance down here. And this table right here shows uh, zero to 300 feet. So from the north entrance to the south entrance is about 1,700 feet. And from the east, excuse me, the west side to the east side is about 1,500 feet. And here's the amphitheater, which is about 500 feet across here. Now the entire hill is 48 feet tall, give or take a couple of feet. And when you're standing down in the amphitheater, you can look up and actually see the composite of Browning Hill right here. And this is the well, and this is what they call a root cellar, but there's no way that you could ever store roots in there. And this is what they call the northern path, and this is the south path to the pond right here. And you'll notice different rock arrangements in here. We'll look at it a little bit closer here with uh, figure two. And these are alignment stones. They, they, they lay parallel to each other and they look totally purposefully put there. Now let's go to the next figure. This is figure two. Now Mr. Irwin made this map with the help of two of his friends. They spent uh, a lot of time out here. And when I was here with my buddy Jason McCullough, we went there I think four times. And uh, we did a lot of documenting and this videotape is over 20 years old and it has a lot of glitches in it. So you're just going to have to bear with it because I don't think anybody else since has, has videotaped it. There's not very much about it online. But you can look up Browning Hill. And you'll see the, uh, the elevation points here, 900, 910, and, and it comes up through here. And this is that same trail, the well, an old cabin, used to be an old shed, which is most likely settlers. And here we have the amphitheater again. Now, I did not get a chance to uh, accurately record the amphitheater. I was just down in there once. It's a little bit more difficult to get to. And here you can see stone walls stone walls. These are huge blocks and in these arrangements of three uh, uh, we're going to look at them a little bit better here and fallen rock here, loading pit, because the, the hill was quarried at one time. I think it was back in the late 1800s and in the uh, mid 1800s and early 1800s as uh, is documented here by Mr. Urban that uh, the chroniclers had listed on on this map or excuse me in, in the books that there were walls here there were walls, stone walls. And here you'll see these, these boulders are just huge and it just shows a fragment of them. This, this is not, certainly not all of them. They're just huge and there are hundreds and hundreds of them here. And here's this pond, we're gonna look at the pond. And here again is the amphitheater, which I wish somebody would cut another video of this. Browning Hill, Brown County, Indiana. Recorded by Powell, Urban, and Trowbridge, November of 1985, which would have been a great time to 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 make their uh, uh, their map because the leaves would be down. It would be a lot easier to navigate. It'd be a little cold, but that would be good. Now let's go to Figure Three, which shows pretty much the north entrance. Here you'll see the elevation points and you'll see some degrees lined off here and it comes up through here here's your orientation compass and just showing you this and and once again this is an old videotape and and uh, there are parts that are very glitchy it's got a lot of pops in it and if anybody wants to take this and clean it up uh, you're more than welcome to now when we get to the well, I'm going to stop and, and, and do a little bit more orientation. So 
now let's uh, now let's look at the, uh, the video. Hope you can bear with it. And this is an, an incredible ancient ruin. Absolutely incredible. And if anyone is interested in seeing this amazing site, I've got some tips for you at the very end. This is open to the public with a couple of catches here and there. So at the very end, I'll give you some tips on how to, on how to see this and, and a couple of things that you should do. We're looking out over, looks like the uh, west, southwest side. This right here being down to the south. Panning back around to the west. I hear a three-wheeler down in the forest there. Now we're going to be panning out to the north. And what we want to notice here is these grandfather stones here. I'm going to move in a little closer and get a good look at these huge block formations. Here's a couple of them here. This is on the, uh, the upper side. And as we come down, we're just going to look at a, uh, at a typical worn block here. Now these blocks were quarried on the other side of the hill, correct? How far away is that? Almost a mile? About six miles. Okay. So a mystery is how these rocks got here. You can definitely tell by the shape of this one. But it's cut. Here we're gonna look at several more. I'm just gonna walk around and show these guys. See how they at one time cut together. Gotta watch our step because we're barefooted. Then we're gonna look on a this is a very interesting formation here. creature living back underneath there. And I'm going to estimate this to be just over four feet wide, just under three and a half feet tall. And you can see how these were never together. The crack in them is uniform, about three inches, perfect, from down here to up there. Now, this uh, damage here is recent. Looks like somebody uh, drilled holes in the top and then popped this rock off here. Now we're looking at a typical stone here. Appears to be about 12 feet from that end to that end back there. I do not have a measuring stick with me. And it has a brother right next to it here. It's uh, almost exactly the same. They look identical. And then uh, 
get a close up of this edge here. This slab here is perfectly cut. Perfect. Show remnants and pieces. A couple of other stones. Those two pieces there could have come from up here. Could have broken or been broken, somewhat similar to that. If that one right there would end up down there one day, I would be suspect that those two were almost all dead. Now, spanning back this way. These uh, large stones are absolutely scattered everywhere. I think I counted over 40 the other day. I'm just going to take a rosy down this way. I'm going to show the definition on that right there. Absolutely immaculate. And if you dig down right here, you don't see this stone. The stone that you'll see is a, a much darker brown colored stone. There's one there. Now I'm going to uh, pull up here. I'm not going to walk down there, but I'm going to focus in on one way down the hill there. slowly pan and we'll go look at the other side from where we started I initially thought that this was the uh, north side of the bluff but it looks like it's uh north, looks like it's the west side pretty obvious by the way the sun's setting 
back side of one of these first stones. I'm going to show this stone again. There's one, two, three, four, five, six or seven of them here right in a row. They appear almost as if there was a wall that was pushed down. Now we're going to look at the artisan in this stonemanship here. time and effort went into creating this rock or actually shaping it. I want to look at the uh, exposed rear of this one. standing on here. It's almost a perfect square, but it looks a lot more logical than that. It goes back up underneath this rock. Now we're going to go to the north here a little bit. This is back our stone number one right here. there. I'm going to focus in on the artisan on that one. I think somebody's stuck down there. And there's these three right here lying perfectly. Adjacent one another. actually level. 
very plain, very flat, very smooth, absolutely no protrusions. several more and down the uh, the hill here down the sides of the hill oh about 120 130 feet or so down the slope this entire peak is surrounded by huge stones weighing from what appear to be 1500 to 1800 pounds that also come out of the same quarry about this size here this stone I'm continuing to move to the north the big square block out in the middle of the woods There's one there. There's one partially hidden back there. I'm going to stand on top of this one rock here. And just show how there are several more down there. slope. Give you some idea how steep this hill and this mountain is. This is not a hill, this is a mountain. Looking out over to the west. I'm going to pan back. I'm going to have to show this rock right here again a different angle. Check him out. Okay, now let's go have a look at the well. Along the way though, back, I'm going to have to show this rock here again from a different angle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right here in a row. I'm just going slowly pass over them from the rear. We were looking at them from the front just a minute ago. So when we looked at, we need to see the artisan, the skill, involved with this, the cutting of these stones.
Okay, I'm going to pause the tape for just a second, give you a little bit more orientation. It's right here is the well. And as we approach it, I actually shoot the root cellar here first. I kind of get some more shots of, around it here. And then Jason and I pull the stones back and we go down into the well. And the, the well wasn't as impressive to me until I read about it in this report. And I said, I got to see down in that well. I want to see what's in that well. Because it, it, they said it was unlike anything. It's not like a settler's well. It, it, it's it's uh, uh, completely... Uh, ambiguous uh, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense so I wanted to videotape down inside the well so what I did was is I hooked a lantern up to a rope so that Jason could uh, operate that lantern and kind of keep it even with my camera my video camera now remember this is old VHS they, they there's a lot of noise there's a lot of camera noise it's a whine that's what you hear in, in this video and you hear it down in the well. And what I did was I turned the eyepiece, the eye cup, up and I lowered the camera down into the well on two ropes so that I could twist my arms about back and forth while Jason held the uh, the lantern. Now, as we were both, uh, this is heavily edited. This particular piece here of the well is a lot more edited but, and I was going to scratch the whole thing but it's just too important. Because as Jason and I had our torsos down in this well, me holding the camera up, him holding the, the lantern up on a rope, uh, we began to pass wind. And, and he was passing, because our fannies were pointed up to the sky, and we're passing wind like crazy. And it's cracking us up. And, and we almost, you know, we, we, had, we had issues because we were laughing so hard. So I had to cut that. So that's why I wanted to explain how come this is so heavily edited right on this particular uh, uh, piece of the film. Now let's continue with our footage from inside the well. Now we're coming up on the well. The well, this uh, structure here was here uh, when the first settlers came to this region and they have no idea who built it. We're gonna look at the markings on it. And look, just right here is the well. And if you look, oh, 15 feet or so, just to the side here, towards the north, I believe, we'll see this structure. And this uh, presumably was built by the settlers. Notice the rock and the color of it. It is not indicative of the other stones. Oh, nowhere near as elaborate. This uh, pit here is probably at this point about five feet deep. I'm sure if it were cleared out, it would probably go as much as uh, six to seven, maybe eight feet deep. And the wall there is about four feet tall. And there was the entrance, whatever this was used for. Okay, now, now on the top of the well, we'll look at these uniform scratches. the same. They have a slight wedge on one end. There are also twisted scratches like this all around the inner lip. to the well, which is dark right now. Okay, now, I'll 
And here we are facing out towards the uh, west and there's a pathway that continues on over to the uh, to the large grandfather stones. And right over in that area is where the well is. Now we're facing out almost due east on the south side of Browning Point. We see right here in this little area, probably about 40 or 50 of these huge stones. I'm gonna pan around to the north. That's about due north. And panning to the west. And these huge rocks line the upper tier. And it would appear as though that there are several subsequent tiers that are actually to the south of this as the uh, as this side of the hill descends. Probably about three or four of the of tiers that appear to be somewhat either natural or extant for many ages. We're gonna go up here and get another shot of that in that direction there. Stream eastern side a little more closely. It's facing right on, almost north. And we're going to continue out that way. Further extending due east. Facing east. several large boulders here stream east in this last grandfather and I don't think this one over here is on the map but now we're going to head back towards the west we're at the uh, far eastern extremity and you see these dots right here These are these stones, actually, that are right here. And they have more of a square shape to them. There's just a, a few more grandfathers in the back of me. And now we're gonna head to the west and show everything facing west. These stones. stone is approximately uh, 12 feet long, probably about four feet tall. Standing here facing to the west. See there's a huge rock back in there. And uh, the rest of the stones go around in that direction there. Curving on around to the west. This area here, I guess, is where that main wall was, where they uh, quarried in the 50s. And right along in this area, I'll pan around to the south here, is uh, supposedly where they uh, found 
the, uh, which I don't doubt, they found uh, several of these stones stacked up in an order. Right in this area here. Holy cow. Huge stone here. Very large. Exceedingly so. It's about 14 feet long. Probably about seven and a half, eight feet wide. This one right here is a very large stone too. And point out that these stones are not native. The native rock is brown stone. Extending out. These stones are about two and a half, three feet high from the grip from the surface of the ground here. And here's just a about uh, 40 feet up the hill to the north. Several more grandfather stones. There's one hiding behind that, that log there. Panning to the west. Better shot of these by the wood pile here. tree there falling down is looking pretty recent. Here's a large stone that was hidden and now revealed. On the south side of this huge stone here, this stone is 25 feet long. It's the biggest one I've seen so far. And now facing back out to the west. Here is where these uh, stones are that we just passed. We're fixing to go into that clearing just to the south of it there and hooking around towards this way. The edge of the next set of rocks, we see these two rocks right here. And then down below them, probably about uh, 50 feet, we see more uh, stones commencing a line right along in that area and moving around that area. We're going to be moving closer now. And we're standing just north of, uh, of the stones as they begin to pick back up. Moving to the west, a lot of debris here. Looking out over the west, a stone here. Just a whole slew of rocks. Going up around the end bend there. Just 
leave the camera running. There's, oh, I'd say probably about 40 big stones right in this one little area here. Here we start to see more of the indicative pattern in the stone. We move down in front of them. aren't as large as the ones on the other side. And there's stones just scattered everywhere here. now up to about the southwest. Okay. We're now walking more southwest around the lower end. And here we have Again, several obviously cut stones. And they are laying down. These stones go up underneath the ground here, you can tell. Probably about 10 feet. That stone there is about 11 feet long. About three and a half, four feet wide. It comes, comes more of the blocked. Stones. That's a good-looking stone there, isn't it? Look at that. Good-looking. Good-looking cuts here. And here's some more that we're standing on. That's a good-looking one there. nicely cut stone here. The edge of it comes to about four feet and then it extends out probably about another five, six inches there where the shear is cut. And now let's get a uh, fix on the length. Thing is uh, 10 feet, four inches. Is that what you said? And the bevel is what, two inches? This is a nicely cut stone here. West, approximately 12 more feet over. We see the uh, indicative layout. Really sheer cut here on this stone. This is a good, good 
should square it off rock. There's another one hiding underneath there, as obviously that one's been cut. How about that shear? And it extends at least, at least uh, 11 feet. Looks like it maybe even goes underneath that tree. And the uh, line of stones picks back up right here with this one. We're almost facing west now. And you can see how that line of stones goes on around that way. And here we see the cuts between the stones. Or the, just every so, every so many feet. One there. Another one here. And here you see the stones laying down. There's some really nice cut stones there, aren't there? Look at that one. Painting out. There's just actually quite a few, quite a few stones. We see the indicative cuts and slices between the stones, even though their shapes are irregular. There's a hewn rock. All of these in here seem to be cut upon, fitted some sort, some way. Now we're up on the back side. And you can continue to see the uh, separations between the stones themselves, as is evident right here. And moving down to right there. sticking up. And we still see the, the same cracks. And here's just a slew of these stones. to the uh, the uh, B south entrance there's a huge cut stone there and just all kinds of boy I tell you what right as it gets off after this just goes everywhere don't it look at this <laughs> there's hundreds of stones here South entrance where we're at, and all these uh, dots here depict uh, where we're now at and the stones that we we're looking at. These stones. All of them cut, looks like, to me. Mm -hmm. 
facing due south right here, down the path. Somebody could ever say that this right here was natural. If I didn't know better, I would say that this one here was a beautiful rock garden. We're going to close in on some of them from up here. That's about 40 feet away. Another one there. It's about 50 feet away. I'm facing down the hill here. That's about 65 feet away. This one here is much closer, probably about 14 feet. This one right here in front of me. Huge, stick straight up out of the ground. Straight up about two feet up out of the ground. And then below it, a big pretty rock there. There's a little clump there. Heading right there, off down into a a, a, a a bluff or a real steep ravine, and we are facing out to the west. And moving on back around towards the north, see more huge stones squared off, cut. They litter the just scattered about, uh, about down the ravine here on the edge of the ravine. And looking down in the ravine itself, I can see uh, a couple of stones down there that are cut. Maybe this will show through. And these are sitting right in the creek bed. They look nicely squared. Penning around to the north.
The incline is much steeper here. It's a perfectly cut rock there. And there's one just on the other side of it. And there's one right here and several more next to it and they go on up. And here are several more. It's a nice one there that I didn't get. It's very steep here. It's finely hewn stone here. And there's another beautiful rock right there. I'm looking out towards the east up the up the ridge again. We're standing in the middle of this. A couple of nice big stones. More nice stones on down. All through here. What is it? Six feet six, one way. And let's see how wide this one is. This rock is uh, four feet, two and a half. That probably a couple of feet, can't really tell, but this is a... Two feet, one inches. Two feet, one inches deep. Let's check the depth on this one right back here. Two feet and seven and a half inches deep. We're going to continue back up towards the south entrance, making a quick sweep towards the north. Several nice big rocks down there. There's a big one right down there, huge cut. And behind it, there are several others. That stone there is probably about 80 feet away from me. Swinging back towards north. Got the hill, there's another finely cut one there. And right here, and here we have a the uh, a ridge picked back up. It has the stones and their uh, indicative uh, spaces between those stones every so many feet. Let's measure that one right there across the front. That looks like a good cut. What you got? Four feet even? Sure. Gee, here we come to a place where there's like 10 stones all together. showing their indicative spacing. Swinging back around towards the north.
appears that the uh, the stones kind of thin out a little bit, but you can tell that the uh, that the uh, uh, that the string continues on around that way, which we would pick up to where we left off at the very first of the video, or where we commenced actually. But there are still fitted stones all up through here. We're standing on them, even though you can't see them. Here's one here. Just knock some leaves off. There's one there, and then it cuts on the other side. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these rocks. All different sizes and shapes. You really can't see them all. And then at the, uh, back on top of the, of the, uh, the, the hill, I'm, uh, standing uh, on the, the south trail, facing towards the east. There's absolutely, would you see that? A beautiful little pond here. This pond is about 40 feet wide and probably about 60 feet long. very clear you can see it two I can see two feet down there I can see the bottom two and a half feet away Let's see if I can get that polywog that is a polywog believe it or not it's a pretty little lake You can see here, we're still standing on the south uh, pathway. You can tell there at the ledge where uh, it's about the crest of the hill, and then it begins at that uh, real sharp incline where all the stones are. Just going up here over the edge, you see the stones coming into view already. And it uh, uh, looks like a, several step stones there, and they are obviously cut big time. It's not really much question. Or stones. Still headed in our general direct direction back where we first started last summer. Boy, look at that rock there. Look at this. Look at examine the cleverness by which this stone is cut. That's a perfect corner on that stone, isn't it? That is a perfect block. I don't know if they can do that good today. Uh, we're standing in the midst of hundreds of these big stones and uh, you can uh, see there the indicative spacing between them. Oh. Beautiful rock there by that tree on down around. We're getting moving up. Where we were when we first began. And I believe that when we get right here, we pretty much have gone full circle. There's our stones there. The uh, north face here is uh, far less disturbed than the south face is where that's where they began quarrying for at first because there were more of these huge stones on the other side. This rock right here again. Nice stone. This stone here is 10 feet. 
seven inches long and to the cut there how many how many feet four feet to the cut and it goes out another foot doesn't it okay it's on this rock six by three feet ten let's measure the check the length on this guy here four inches long and nine feet eleven inches to the bevel the length on this stone here pretty long one isn't it 13 and a half feet long roughly and then the back to the bevel about 14 feet long how wide is this sucker here four feet three inches wide Let's go measure this one sticking out over here. The width and height, we can see the bottom of it very clearly. Four feet, three inches wide, and how tall? That looks pretty much indicative of the whole lot there about how thick they are. See the cuts. some good specimens, some good measurements. And that concludes our rendezvous of the circumference on top of Browning Point. This is facing out towards the south, panning towards the west, and back around towards the north. Where we see all these stones lined up. Back up to the path. Now, items for further research concerning this site. As I pointed out, the water in the pond when I was there was, was really clear, very, very clear. But I would like to know what's at the bottom of that pond, how deep it is, and uh, uh, what, what, what if anything can be found inside that pond. Take a daring soul, and someone needs to shoot this amphitheater here and get some real good footage of this, uh, of this, this canyon in here. I did make it there one time. And my battery was too low, and, and I, I didn't get any footage. But I wanted to get the top of the hill with, with, my, with my time and my battery. But uh, uh, there was just no, it just didn't work out for me to shoot anything here in the amphitheater. Now, if anyone wants to see this site, like I said, it was, it's open to the public. And there's places to park. I doubt very seriously if you will see anyone uh, or, or meet anybody going up and down like some of the other sites. But... You want to wear good hiking shoes, dress for the occasion, and don't litter anything. Don't take any trash in, uh, and, and if you would, just for me, take a, a trash bag with you. So if you see any bottles or, or Mountain Dew uh, plastic bottles or, or paper trash or anything, pick it up and take it out with you. Do that for me, because this is a fantastic site, and it will be open to the public as long as it's not trashed out. So happy hiking, and I hope that anybody that wants to gets a chance to check out this amazing site right in the center of Indiana. You can't get any more heartland than, than the center of Indiana. It just ain't going to happen. And this could be the largest megalithic village, ancient village, in uh, the whole Midwest. I, I'm calling it that. I'm call, I don't know of any other one that's bigger or where the stones are, are, are larger. It's just an amazing, an amazing place. Browning Hill, Brown County, Indiana.